നമ്മള് നമ്മുടെ ട്വന്റി വീക്സ് വിത്ത് അലിംന എന്ന പ്രോഗ്രാമിന്റെ എട്ടാമത്തെ ആഴ്ചയിലേക്ക് കടന്നിരിക്കുകയാണ് ഈ ആഴ്ച നമ്മോട് കൂടെ ഉള്ളത് അനന്യയാണ് അനന്യ ഇവിടെ തന്നെയാണ് ഡിഗ്രിയും പി ജിയും എല്ലാം പഠിച്ചത് അപ്പൊ ഒരു ഡിഫറെന്റ് ആയിട്ടുള്ള ടോപ്പിക്കുമായിട്ട് നിങ്ങൾക്ക് വഴികാട്ടിയായി എന്തൊക്കെ അനുഭവങ്ങളും മറ്റ് മാർഗങ്ങളും ഒക്കെ കാണിച്ചുകൊണ്ട് അനന്യയുടെ ടോക്ക് ഉണ്ടാവും അനന്യ ഇൻട്രൊഡ്യൂസ് ചെയ്യാൻ വേണ്ടിയും ഈ പരിപാടിയെ പറ്റി സംസാരിക്കാനും വേണ്ടി പ്രോഗ്രാമിന്റെ കോർഡിനേറ്ററായ ഹരീഷ്മൻ സാറെ ക്ഷണിക്കുന്നു ഓഡിയൻസിന് എല്ലാവർക്കും സ്വാഗതം എനിക്ക് തോന്നുന്നു നമ്മള് ഫസ്റ്റ് ഇയർ ബി എസ് സി അഡ്മിഷൻ ഏതാണ്ട് ഒരു പക പൂർത്തിയാവാറായ ഒരു ഘട്ടത്തിൽ ആദ്യമായിട്ട് നടത്തുന്ന വെബിനാറാണ് എന്ന് വെച്ചാൽ നമ്മൾ ഇടയ്ക്ക് ഒരു മൂന്നാഴ്ച സ്റ്റോപ്പ് ചെയ്തിരുന്നു ഫൈനൽ ഇയർ ബി എസ് സിക്കാർക്കും എം എസ് സിക്കാർക്കും ഫൈനൽ ഇയർ എം എസ് സിക്കാർക്കും എക്സാം ആയതുകൊണ്ട് അതിനിടയിലായിരുന്നു ഫസ്റ്റ് ഇയർ ബി എസ് സിയുടെ അഡ്മിഷൻ ഒപ്പം ഫസ്റ്റ് ഇയർ എം എസ് സിയുടെ അഡ്മിഷൻ തുടങ്ങിയിട്ടുണ്ട് അത് കംപ്ലീറ്റ് ആയിട്ടില്ല ഫസ്റ്റ് ഇയർ ബി എസ് സിയുടെ ഓൾമോസ്റ്റ് ഫൈനൽ സ്റ്റേജിലാണ് അപ്പോ ഇതിനകത്ത് ഈ ഓഡിയൻസിൽ കൂടുതൽ പേര് ജോയിൻ ചെയ്യുന്നുണ്ട് ഫസ്റ്റ് ഇയർ ബി എസ് സിക്കാരുണ്ടാവും ഫസ്റ്റ് ഇയർ എം എസ് സിക്കാരുണ്ടാവും അവരുടെ അവരെ അവരുടെ സീനിയേഴ്സിന്റെ പേരിൽ കൂടി എല്ലാവർക്കും വേണ്ടി സ്വാഗതം ചെയ്യുന്നു നമ്മുടെ ഇന്നത്തെ സ്പീക്കർ അനന്യ ഡോക്ടർ അനന്യ ഗംഗാധരൻ അനന്യ ബി എസ് സി ഫിസിക്സും എം എസ് സി ഫിസിക്സും നമ്മുടെ ഡിപ്പാർട്ട്മെന്റിലാണ് പഠിച്ചത് രണ്ടായിരത്തി ഒൻപതിൽ ബി എസ് സി ഫിസിക്സ് പാസ് ഔട്ട് ആയി പിന്നെ രണ്ടു വർഷം രണ്ടായിരത്തി പതിനൊന്ന് വരെ എം എസ് സി ഫിസിക്സ് ചെയ്യുന്നത് നമ്മുടെ ഡിപ്പാർട്ട്മെന്റ് തന്നെയാണ് അത് കഴിഞ്ഞിട്ട് അനന്യക്ക് എം എസ് സി കഴിഞ്ഞ ഉടനെ തന്നെ ജെ ആർ എഫ് സി എസ് സി ആർ യു ജി സി സി എസ് സി ആറിന്റെ ജെ ആർ എഫ് കിട്ടി ജൂനിയർ റിസർച്ച് ഫെലോഷിപ്പ് കിട്ടി ഐ ഐ ടി മഡ്രാസിൽ പോസ്റ്റ് ഡോക്ടർ ഐ സോറി പി എച്ച് ഡിക്ക് ജോയിൻ ചെയ്തു അനന്യയുടെ റിസർച്ച് ഈ ഒരു ഏരിയ അതായത് ലിഥിയം അയോൺ ബാറ്ററീസ് സൂപ്പർ കപ്പാസിറ്റർ ഒക്കെ വരുന്ന എനർജി ടെക്നോളജി ഏരിയ എന്ന് പറയാം ഈ ഒരു ഏരിയയിലായിരുന്നു ഐ ഐ ടി മഡ്രാസിൽ നിന്ന് രണ്ടായിരത്തി പതിനേഴിൽ പി എച്ച് ഡി കംപ്ലീറ്റ് ചെയ്തു അനന്യ അതിനുശേഷം ഒരു വർഷം ഐ ഐ ടി ഹൈദരാബാദിൽ പോസ്റ്റ് ഡോക്ടറൽ ഫെലോ ആയിരുന്നു രണ്ടായിരത്തി പതിനേഴ് പതിനെട്ടിൽ പിന്നീട് ഒരു വർഷം രണ്ടായിരത്തി പതിനെട്ട് പത്തൊൻപതിൽ ഇസ്രയേലിലെ ബെൻ ഗുറിയോൺ യൂണിവേഴ്സിറ്റി ഓഫ് നെജ് അവിടെ പോസ്റ്റ് ഡോക്ടറൽ ഫെലോ ആയിരുന്നു രണ്ടായിരത്തി പത്തൊൻപത് മുതൽ അനന്യ അക്കാഡമിക്സ് ഫീൽഡിൽ നിന്ന് കുറച്ച് മാറി ഒരു കമ്പനിയിൽ ഒരു പ്രൈവറ്റ് കമ്പനിയിൽ ഈ എനർജി ടെക്നോളജിയായിട്ട് ബന്ധപ്പെട്ട് ലിഥിയം അയോൺ ബാറ്ററീസും അതേപോലെ സൂപ്പർ കപ്പാസിറ്റേഴ്സും പ്രൊഡ്യൂസ് ചെയ്യുന്ന ഒരു ഇന്ത്യൻ കമ്പനിയിൽ അതൊരു സ്റ്റാർട്ടപ്പ് ആണ് ഇന്ത്യൻ കമ്പനിയിൽ റിസർച്ച് ആൻഡ് ഡെവലപ്മെന്റ് എനർജി റിസർച്ച് ആൻഡ് ഡെവലപ്മെന്റ് സെക്ഷൻ എനർജി ടെക്നോളജി റിസർച്ച് ആൻഡ് ഡെവലപ്മെന്റ് സെക്ഷന്റെ ഡയറക്ടർ ആയിട്ട് ജോയിൻ ചെയ്തിട്ടുണ്ട് ഗോഡി ഇന്ത്യ പ്രൈവറ്റ് ലിമിറ്റഡ് എന്നുള്ള ഹൈദരാബാദ് ബേസ്ഡ് ആയിട്ടുള്ള കമ്പനിയാണ് കഴിഞ്ഞ ഒരു വർഷമായിട്ട് അനന്യ ഈ കമ്പനിയിലാണ് ജോയിൻ ചെയ്യുന്നത് അപ്പോ ഈ ഒരു അനന്യയുടെ അത് ഡിഫറെന്റ് ആയിട്ടുള്ള എക്സ്പീരിയൻസുകളാണ് അക്കാഡമിക്സിൽ ഉണ്ടായിരുന്നു അതിനുശേഷം റിസർച്ച് ആൻഡ് ഡെവലപ്മെന്റിലേക്ക് വന്നു നമ്മുടെ ഡിപ്പാർട്ട്മെന്റിന് പോയിട്ട് അക്കാഡമിക് ഫീൽഡിൽ പോയിട്ട് റിസർച്ച് പോസ്റ്റ് ഡോക്ക് എല്ലാം കഴിഞ്ഞിട്ട് ആർ എൻ ഡി വർക്കിലേക്ക് റിസർച്ച് ആൻഡ് ഡെവലപ്മെന്റ് വർക്കിലേക്ക് വന്ന ആൾക്കാർ കുറച്ചു പേരുണ്ട് അതിൽ പെട്ട ഒരാളാണ് അനന്യ അപ്പൊ അനന്യ ഈ ഒരു എക്സ്പീരിയൻസിന്റെ ഒരു പശ്ചാത്തലത്തിൽ ഇന്ന് നിങ്ങളോട് സംസാരിക്കാൻ വേണ്ടി ചൂസ് ചെയ്ത ടോപ്പിക് തന്നെ ഓപ്പർച്യൂണിറ്റീസ് ഇൻ എനർജി ടെക്നോളജി ഫോർ ഫിസിസ് എന്നുള്ളതാണ് അപ്പൊ നമ്മുടെ എല്ലാവരുടെയും പേരിൽ ഡോക്ടർ അനന്യയെ നിങ്ങളോട് സംസാരിക്കാൻ ക്ഷണിക്കുന്നു അപ്പൊ അനന്യയോട് ഒരു റിക്വസ്റ്റ് ഉള്ളത് അനന്യയുടെ ടോക്ക് വിഷയത്തിലേക്ക് കടക്കുന്നതിന് മുമ്പേ മറ്റ് സ്പീക്കേഴ്സ് ഒക്കെ നമ്മളോട് ഇന്ററാക്ട് ചെയ്തു നമ്മുടെ അലുമി ആവുമ്പോൾ പ്രത്യേകിച്ചും അതായത് ബി എസ് സി ഫിസിക്സ് അത് കഴിഞ്ഞ് എം എസ് സി ഫിസിക്സ് ചെയ്ത ഒരു കാലഘട്ടവും പിന്നെ അതിനുശേഷം മഡ്രാസിൽ ഐ ഐ ടി മഡ്രാസിൽ റിസർച്ച് ചെയ്ത കാലഘട്ടം രണ്ട് സ്ഥലത്ത് പോസ്റ്റ് ഡോക്ക് ചെയ്തിരുന്നു ഇന്ത്യയിൽ ഐ ഐ ടി ഹൈദരാബാദിൽ ഒപ്പം ഇസ്രായേൽ യൂണിവേഴ്സിറ്റിയിൽ അപ്പൊ അവിടെയൊക്കെ ആ ഒരു എക്സ്പീരിയൻസുകളൊക്കെ നമ്മളോട് ഒന്ന് ഷെയർ ചെയ്യാനും പിന്നെ അത് കഴിഞ്ഞ് കഴിഞ്ഞ ഒരു വർഷമായിട്ട് റിസർച്ച് ആൻഡ് ഡെവലപ്മെന്റിലുള്ള എക്സ്പീരിയൻസ് ഒന്ന് ഷെയർ ചെയ്യാനും അനന്യയെ
darkness or whatever and uh, maybe there's some kind of depression or whatever so i also come across the same thing and so i want to for a second and it is on my phone my ha it is on the mic of you let me hear my sincere apology yesterday uh, i had one uh, meeting so it was very urgent and i couldn't uh, join the meeting so i appreciate available time but i ap- apology for that so and uh, my experience uh, so what i will say like mm, bsc 2007 i was there same like you people and uh, so actually uh, എനിക്ക് അങ്ങനെ പ്ലാൻ ഒന്നും ഉണ്ടായിരുന്നില്ല ബി എസ് സി ഫിസിക്സ് എടുക്കണം എന്നുള്ള ഒരു പ്ലാൻ ഒന്നും ഉണ്ടായിരുന്നില്ല ആക്ച്വലി പ്ലസ് ടു ആഫ്റ്റർ പ്ലസ് ടു ഐ തോട്ട് ലൈക്ക് ഐ വിൽ ടേക്ക് സം ഇംഗ്ലീഷ് ലിറ്ററേച്ചർ ഓർ സംതിങ് ലൈക്ക് ദാറ്റ് ദൻ ഫൈനലി ആഫ്റ്റർ എക്സാമിനേഷൻ സം ഹൗ ഐ തോട്ട് ഫോർ ബി എസ് സി ഐ ഐ തിങ്ക് പ്ലസ് ടു ടൈം വി ഹാവ് ദ ലാബ് എക്സാം റൈറ്റ് സോ ഐ ഡി ഡിൻ അറ്റൻഡ് ഓൾ ദ ക്ലാസ്സസ് so i requested my teacher um, i i may fail if i didn't repeat the uh, experiments in the lab so she asked she uh, she said okay we can do it some people also miss some classes we can arrange like that then what happened is like i since i missed so many labs i did all the reverse calculation for all the experiments in plus 2 bring plus 2 then uh, i two three <laughs> records i collected and everything even person to person error also will be the error percent and all these things so i did the reverse calculation and some two or three days we got i repeated all the experiments and then uh, i could somehow manage the exam practical exam during plus 2 then i thought okay it's, it's good something it's fine <laughs> then that time only i thought of taking physics and joining madap that is the thing earlier i don't have any pre plan to join for bsc physics so uh, somehow that really worked for me uh, like that i joined and really i got passion after joining for bsc in marple college the experience you know we that time uh, suresh sir ramachandra sir irish sir sunil sir hamid sir jijo sir noor sir shashi sir every like a different different experience everyone are sharing their experience with us and even uh, for uh, like you know uh, now maybe you might not have experience with stress or anamosh sir uh, maybe some people may be or not i am not very sure about it uh, but it's a uh, quite nice experience i would say like uh, they they are the people uh, try to encourage you and make you they want to see you are in some level they, they want you to bring up in life so this thing in my experience i can say in your journey in your life maybe after you leave bsc after you leave madapal it is very hard to see that kind of teachers to bring you up in life so that i really appreciate all the teachers in madapal college so that you may not realize now but once you leave the college you will definitely realize the fact so that is one thing sorry i i would i want to say completely in malayalam because uh, but some <laughs> sorry for that so, and uh, other thing uh, experience uh, whatever is bsc uh, you it is very important you have to make some friendship Uh, because all the time we can't achieve everything in life by individually that is one suggestion from my side so always the collective work will give a good output and even for sh- if you if you are solving some problems you take uh, other people also and you discuss with the people and if you can't find the solution you discuss with the teacher because this kind of this will help you to even tailor your brain and to good and to make a good output so that is one thing i would say you have to focus during even bsc or msc whatever you do even this because we we will think like we can achieve something individually but the thing is like you can in achieve something individually but if you want to grow your uh, knowledge always the discussion will help you so that is one thing i want to say and it really worked for me also even 
BSC time, we had very good friendship. Even still, I maintain the same friendship. And because we are, it is like the knowledge we are sharing with friends and we are sharing with the teachers. And even so many blunder questions also I might have asked during my BSC also. <laughs> so the thing is like uh, even uh, some kind of um, interest or passion that the teachers could create in our that's why or maybe I continue for MSc or PhD or postdoc. Maybe because the uh, passion or uh, because the interest they create in us. So uh, the thing is like, and other thing, one uh, one thing I want to say is some. You also feel very comfortable if I speak in Malayalam completely, and I also want to do the same thing. But I want to make it understand that. It's better to know the mother tongue. It is better to communicate. But your knowledge, if you want to communicate a third person in other place, so you have to use English. So because even you have the talent, but you don't know how to communicate it. That actually, I also face the same problem when I come out from uh, because we uh, after finishing MSc we are joining a new atmosphere in IIT Madras a new uh, different atmosphere different people different culture everything so the thing is like since e even then if we know the thing we can't really communicate with the people that a great challenge is there for us because we all I also came from the village background I also came from the Malayalam medium so it's I want to say like you want you have to put some effort to communicate with the people and to make the people to understand what knowledge you have that is one thing very important and other thing um, BSc what and we all we always uh, I don't want maybe I think I can share with all you friends. So maybe like we used to plot the graphs also for the teachers because of the energy levels. You can see this. Uh, Heiser will maintain the same energy level from the beginning of the class and at the end of the class because there will be no energy drop. It will be a constant graph. So <laughs> usually we do plot the graph also for Heiser and Suresh. Sir. The energy level we because Suresh sir used to come with like very peak energy. And so he will uh, one hour that period fully with the energy by at the end of the class. So he will completely deliver the energy. Hydrosa will come with the same energy by going also with the same energy. We used to plot the same graph. <laughs> Hydrosa versus Suresa. I remember. I don't know whether <laughs> it's a good platform to share this thing. Even I should share the experience with you people in personally, I think. But I think the teachers won't care about it. So that is uh, one thing, and uh, other thing like uh, BSc. If you want to get it in some institutes, I would say like I don't ask you people to get into some in only in focus only Indian organization Indian institutes. You have opportunity. You have to go abroad because the advantage is like yeah, I don't say like. Indian Institute is not uh, something inferior, but I would say if you go abroad, you will get very good exposure in life. So how to get it into the new institute? Like you now the thing is like you have to work hard really and then uh, try to um, clear all the national level exams and then you can join for MSc or uh, the masters and then next level you can go abroad actually because for getting the exposure uh, because after a certain period we will find that time also is very important because here uh, the pro, uh, one thing the main obstacle is here always it lacks like some five years some even uh, the same uh, my colleague he joined with me in 2012 and he cleared his PhD one year one week ago so that uh, in IIT Madras, so that kind of things can happen because of so many other things. But once you go uh, abroad, the advantage is like the within the duration you can finish, and you will get a very good exposure also. So that is one thing I would uh, I would ask you people to see in that opportunity. So whatever is there, and other things like um, you can apply uh, some places like uh, for an intern. And like uh, so, even some if you go for the vacation, vacation time, apply for uh, some 
um, process some projects interns that will give you some experience to handle the instruments or to know more things then based on your experience you can apply in, uh, in different places for a good opportunity so these are the things i think now you people should be like uh, proactive i would say it's a proactive because uh, people are going for a uh, different uh, watching different things so if you come from uh, here it's very difficult to um i uh, like um, compete so in that way uh, if you want to uh, be in the track you have to put effort and you have to proactive so that is the other thing in and out in bsc it's uh, everyone what you are feeling now the same thing some fun time and some we we'll know something and uh, some fun time will be there i enjoy more than msc i would say i enjoyed bsc time very well uh so and whatever you and i think i can guarantee you people for 100% whatever the teachers say you can take it as granted it's good because i didn't face in my life any problem with the uh, the advice which i take it as a granted so uh, whatever they uh, because now also for this meeting uh, said so all like you uh, that's what i have to speak in malayalam and both but sorry because when it comes it is coming automatically uh, because now i am forced to speak here to people in english that's why it's happening uh, so enda eniki parayanulladhu nu vacha we have to we have to speak uh, means i want to speak like that is connection is going okay so what i want to say is uh, because they are also careful they contacting us and they are telling you people have to give and deliver a talk that means that if they are putting to for you people only they they want you people to come up in life and uh, to achieve something good in life so use the opportunity very well and that is the other thing and uh, msc msc time yeah actually uh, i also i also want to be in uh, iit for msc unfortunately like the, the exam time i took so much tension and i couldn't clear and it came in extremely best only i couldn't uh, get it and then uh, that time when i talked uh, suresh said all like okay msc you join here you ha- you can go to iit madras he said i i don't know much about the other iits and i i don't bother about it i was thinking i want to get in iit madras only uh, so the thing is like yeah uh, then i was uh, that time solve some problems and all these things somehow i lost some connection in msc to focus gone and all. and then i was there then some realization came like uh, some how i have to follow this is uh, i want to be in this field i thought and then uh, in between i joined for a post master course so, and then i thought okay i started solving all the problems from home and preparing and uh, i came uh, because that time the msc exam was not over because it it postponed i think for some time and then uh, teachers also helped me i came to again the college for preparing one month i came uh, somehow i call, i qualified and uh, somehow i could go for writing the exam in iit madras and then yeah it worked i think here yeah, shanti krishna is there i i went with her only uh, so she also helped me because i stayed with her relative home because i, I don't have like i was not expecting to clear the exam in iit madras and uh, i'll be in the interview and so somehow it uh, really worked only because i would say like whatever the we are we learned from the college that is more that really works because i don't have any shortcuts for the equations for writing and any exams so only i, I carry so many books and i went for uh, even for writing in some but the thing is like the uh, all the questions i remember it came related to the electrodynamics most of the questions that time and then uh, even for the interview panel also uh, because the class we are i am remembering the class even for the bsc uh, ms and all these things so we we will be if you know the you know, subject if you listen carefully in the class i didn't uh, study much like in home after going back to home and so much the, all about like uh, whatever we are learning from uh, college mostly 
so uh, that really worked and also we some sometimes uh, among with the friend circle we will discuss and we will solve some problems and all these things was happening that time that really worked all the time so i also would suggest everyone like if you people follow if you can't find yeah, some time in home yeah. you utilize the time in the college and you also may be having some obstacles like traveling you uh, here no hostels and all this things you will be traveling and coming and going you will be tired and all these things but utilize the time from whatever you did in the college and discuss with all the t- teachers so they are ready to help you people so utilize it very well it will really work that's what uh, i got from my experience even from uh, like uh, from madapalli college and then when we move to like i am address for the phd it is a quite different experience and all all years we we'll go with the different different experience first uh, the language problem uh, i mean a language problem is we'll understand all the things but the thing is like how we we'll communicate with the, the person in the right way because sometimes if we if you want to uh, communicate uh, your subject uh, they don't uh, they don't really get it what you really want to convey that one thing and other thing is like you will see like you are coming from a village background or whatever the background and you don't have much exposure so that you will face one problem i don't say it's a big problem but you will feel it the initial time is a big problem because they already exposed so much exposure they got it and we are uh, mingling with these people so but at the same time take it as a positive you try to learn that's all and then uh, yeah their phd i worked in uh, batteries and the super capacitor and the lithium sulfur battery also i started so i got some opportunity to start a field in the lab so i had to start from the scratch uh, so it it was a tough time for me because i don't have any experience here at field so uh, i really put uh, so much hard work for that and to bring to establish one field in the lab but uh, but i was still like uh, that kind of experience helped me in life because one thing like some uh, patent also fired that is as a part of it but the thing is like that gives us so much confidence in the field so whatever like uh, we speak we got the confidence because we establishing one thing from the scratch so without much help that gives so much confidence even then uh, that time you feel like oh your time is wasting getting wasted everyone are getting results but it is not like that you may learn more than others because you are learning from the scratch and you are putting effort so so much thing will happen but ultimately you will be to learn something that will happen so the thing is like something you know, don't compare with anybody like uh, they are getting something but you should be focused whatever you are doing put 100% effort and you can come up that's what uh, one thing during my phd i would say like what i i have learned and then i went for the postdoc that is some different experience in iit hyderabad so there uh, the professor gave me an opportunity to lead the team actually so i was suggesting the problems for the phd students and then tech students and there also i established the field and even for one year whatever i have done it for the five years more than work i could do within the one year in the iit hyderabad and so that i was really happy i enjoyed also because whatever i learned i could apply it during my postdoc uh, that's why it really worked well and then and uh, so you all feel like one post doc okay we have to do it in abroad it may be something different experience yeah so i like uh, i also went in uh, israel in ben gurion university there uh, one post doc i have done but that was a different field it is something related it's uh, related to the thermodynamics uh, it's not very closely like the in the application point of view some cool and and you will see the thermal conductivity and so on so things so they are okay they are uh, so israelis they are very well advanced in technology and very sharp while thinking or acting so that the thing is like we have to learn that one how 
uh, they are catching the things and uh, what they do and what kind of uh, research they are doing and how they are able to make it uh, better than the existing if you have seen you might have seen like in news so israeli products like whatever they do in the military that uh, they will buy from the america they will make it better than so whatever the things they are using better than what, uh, what is existing in other countries so that kind of uh, uh, technological development they are doing so that kind of uh, learning process uh, was very helpful for me yeah for the postdoc and i also thought to continue for uh, some postdoc for some more years and that was my previous plan uh, but uh, i have seen some opportunity from here in, in, in india then i thought okay uh, why don't you try some something different because in academic you have uh, some limitations i would say you you publish some paper you get some patent so these all have some you can't go beyond that uh, the thing is like you your uh, research publications will come and your patents will come and all your research will be chaired in the lab and you can't uh, something if you want to see what the people are using and uh, in the practical level that is not in uh, in academy that is the restrictions so i thought okay something <laughs> okay some t- take some different route and uh, explore and maybe it will be a good thing to learn some more thing so in that way i joined here but i i would say like it's a really good experience compared to i can't say it's a comparison but it's we are learning more things we are interacting with more people and it means me really good every day we are learning so many new new things if you are open to learn new things if you don't feel keep any restrictions is good so like that now one year finished it's been quite a while we should yeah maybe i will go to the presentation now okay then actually uh... അനന്യ ഇൻട്രൊഡ്യൂസ് ചെയ്തപ്പോ പറയാൻ വിട്ടുപോയതാണ് ആഡ് ചെയ്യേണ്ടതാണ് അതിന്റെ കൂടെ അനന്യക്ക് റിസർച്ച് പോസ്റ്റ് റിസർച്ചിന്റെ കാലഘട്ടത്തിലായിട്ട് പതിനൊന്ന് ഇന്റർനാഷണൽ പബ്ലിക്കേഷൻസ് ഉണ്ട് മൂന്ന് പേറ്റന്റ് ഉണ്ട് റിസർച്ച് ആൻഡ് ഡെവലപ്മെന്റ് വർക്കിന് ധാരാളം ഹെൽപ്പ് ചെയ്യുന്ന അനന്യയുടെ പ്രസന്റേഷൻ തുടങ്ങി ഓപ്പർച്യൂണിറ്റി ഇൻ എനർജി ടെക്നോളജി ഫീൽഡ് ഫോർ ഫിസിസിസ്റ്റ് സോ ഹിയർ yeah so i i would like to start here from apj abdul kalam so i i think this cot is very catchy for me and it is very apt for me maybe like for you also it will be very apt enikku thonu ningalku odu maathiri thanne ee cot bhangara useful aayirikkum karan you should not give up and we should not allow the problem to defeat us so uh, nammal endengilu we we will face different problems if you want to achieve something in life you will face so many problems maybe in our bsc you, you may think like yeah so what, um, how it may be if you want to join in in iit or j then you have to maybe you have to convince your parents like why don't you join in care or why you want to go there then that is also one obstacle so the thing is like after msc if you go for uh, some phd they may ask why don't you choose uh, some professional and why you want to go for that even i i can say i face the same thing because i also face the same question after msc when i want to go for the phd then uh, father asked like why don't you uh, go for you can get the net and uh, you can uh, try here in 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 lecture ship or uh, something or uh, schools or whatever either you can go for the ba or whatever i don't say like anything is inferior or anything is superior but what you want to do you have to focus 
then they gave me one year so i thought okay within one year i will try if it works so i have to put some hard work if it works i can go with what i want to otherwise i will go in the other way so this kind of question maybe you also face some different questions only the thing is like your parents or so will be open but you have to you should have developed confidence on you and then you have to convince your parents and whoever like all wants you to be in good position so that only matters your confidence yeah and other thing here you are seeing this there is an interesting person so it's john b good enough and uh, he is very famous in energy technology uh, i would say especially in lithium ion battery and uh, he got a uh, nobel prize in 2019 uh, and he is basically from physics background and he is a physicist so that's what i put uh, him here in this picture in in this slide and other sorry other two people uh, cnr rao and uh, he is an indian scientist and uh, armugo mantiram armugo mantiram also very famous in batteries and the why these two people are in this slide is because if you check his wikipedia you can see like this person put these two indians in his wikipedia there are so many scientists they but i i want to make you people understand so our research our idea or means whatever we do it's nothing it is not inferior to anything what we are seeing in other countries but only the thing is like we don't have the infrastructure now to develop and show to the world so that is one obstacle we are uh, facing that is the main problem that is the we have really here a gap between the academic and the industry so academ if it goes um, hand in hand only we can it to something in for the country and for the development and so this is a right time and this is a good opportunity now because now the thing is like uh, so if you check all the plans also whatever we are getting they are making even in the project whatever the institutes are writing they are making always a collaboration with the industry because now the thing is like uh, more academic is now changed now they want it in the productive manner so always now the, the all the projects also going in that manner the academic and the industry collaboration so i i just want you people also to think in that way it is not like only bounded so some people will be more interested to know more academic research but that's also good because i would say like a theoretician also will come into play in the industry and come into play in the academic so and experimentally experimentally store so so both but why you should understand what is your talent you want to be a theoretician or you want to be an experimentalist or you can handle both that kind of uh, under self uh, assessment you should do and because one if you if you people are planning for phd i would suggest you spend some time and understand like what you want to and uh, don't go randomly and join with some professor i would say like you have to do some research once you clear the examination and you get some appointment in some institute do some research and spend some research and uh, contact people and to understand whether that field really works for you and if you, if you understand the potential then you go then you can come up with something that's what i want to put it here and other one is like the elon elon musk and he is you may be knowing about the tesla so he is an entrepreneur he is also from the physics background and he is doing nowadays wonder and what uh, he is a very good marketing person also and uh, now the people the whole world some announcement comes from his mouth the whole world is looking what he is telling what he is predicting for the future and he is a very successful entrepreneur so i would also like to see you people as an entrepreneur in field. that's why i put this slide so i want to encourage and you people should come in life and not only like you don't have actually no no barrier here 
you have to focus and you have to come up if you really focus you can also be an entrepreneur yeah so here i just want to play a video related to because uh, i just put this uh, slide uh, because i i'm not sure about it like what kind of uh, talk you are expecting from me and uh, uh, how i can convey that topic so here i just put to make you understand what is lithium ion battery how a lithium ion battery works so this is more related to the work so maybe uh, some of you may feel interesting so i'll just play this one yeah a portable power supply has become the lifeline of the modern technological oh it's not working the free screen a portable power supply has become the lifeline of the modern technological world especially the lithium ion battery Imagine a world where all cars are driven by induction motors and not internal combustion engines. Induction motors are far superior to IC engines in almost all engineering aspects, as well as being more robust than engine. Another huge disadvantage of IC engines is that they only produce usable torque in a narrow band of engine RPM. Considering all of these factors, induction motors are definitely the perfect choice for an automobile. However, the power supply for an induction motor is the real bottleneck in achieving a major induction motor revolution in the automobile industry. Let's explore how Tesla, with the help of lithium ion cells, solved this issue and why lithium ion cells are going to become even better in the future. Let's take a Tesla cell out from the battery pack and break it down. You can see different layers of chemical compounds inside it. Tesla's lithium ion battery works on an interesting concept associated with metals called the electrochemical potential. Electrochemical potential is the tendency of a metal to lose electrons. In fact, the very first cell developed by Alessandro Volta more than 200 years ago was based on the concept of electrochemical potential. A general electrochemical series is shown here. According to these values, lithium has the highest tendency to lose electrons. electrons and fluorine has the least tendency to lose electrons volta took two metals with different electrochemical potentials in this case zinc and silver and created an external flow of electricity sony made the first commercial model of a lithium ion battery in 1991 it was again based on the same concept of electrochemical potential lithium which has the highest tendency to lose electrons was used in lithium ion cells Lithium has only one electron in its outer shell and always wants to lose this electron. Due to this reason, pure lithium is a highly reactive metal. It even reacts with water and air. The trick of a lithium ion battery operation is the fact that lithium in its pure form is a reactive metal. But when lithium is part of a metal oxide, it is quite stable. Assume that somehow we have separated a lithium atom from this metal oxide. This lithium atom is highly unstable and will instantly form a lithium ion and an electron. However, lithium as a part of metal oxide is much more stable than this state. If you can provide two different paths for the electron and lithium ion flow between the lithium and the metal oxide, the lithium atom will automatically reach the metal oxide part. During this process, we have produced electricity from the electron flow through the one path. From these discussions, it is clear that we can produce electricity from this lithium metal oxide if we firstly separate out lithium atoms from the lithium metal oxide, and secondly guide the electrons lost from such lithium atoms through an external circuit. Let's see how lithium ion cells achieve these two objectives. A practical lithium ion cell also uses an electrolyte and graphite. Graphite has a layered structure. These layers are loosely bonded so that the separated lithium ions can be stored very easily there. 
The electrolyte between the graphite and the metal oxide acts as a guard which allows only lithium ions through. Now let's see what happens when you connect a power source across this arrangement. The positive side of the power source will obviously every electron from the lithium atoms of the metal oxide. These electrons flow through the external circuit as they cannot flow through the electrolyte and reach the graphite layer. In the meantime, the positively charged lithium ions will be attracted towards the negative terminal and will flow through the electrolyte. Lithium ions also reach the graphite layer space and get trapped there. Once all the lithium atoms reach the graphite sheet, the cell is fully charged. Thus, we have achieved the first objective, which is the lithium ions and electrons detached from the metal oxide. As we discussed, this is an unstable state, as if being perched on top of a hill. As soon as the power source is removed and a load is connected, the lithium ions want to go back to their stable state as a part of the metal oxide. Due to this tendency, the lithium ions move through the electrolyte and electrons via the load, just like sliding down a hill. Thus, we get an electrical current through the load. Please note that the graphite does not have a role in the chemical reaction of the lithium ion cells. Graphite is just a storage medium for lithium ions. If the internal temperature of the cell rises due to some abnormal condition, the liquid electrolyte will dry up and there will be a short circuit between the anode and cathode, and this can lead to a fire or an explosion. To avoid such a situation, an insulating layer called the separator is placed between the electrodes. The separator is permeable for the lithium ions because of its microporosity. In a practical cell, the graphite and metal oxide are coated onto copper and aluminum foils. The foils act as current collectors here, and the positive and negative tabs can be easily taken out from the current collectors. An organic salt of lithium acts as the electrolyte, and it is coated onto the separator sheet. All these three sheets are wound onto the cylinder around a central steel core, thus making the cell more compact. A standard Tesla cell has a voltage of between 3 and 4.2 volts. Many such Tesla cells are connected in series and in a parallel fashion to form a module. 16 such modules are connected in series to form a battery pack in the Tesla car. Lithium ion cells produce a lot of heat during the operation and a high temperature will decay the cell's performance. A battery management system is used to manage the temperature, state of charge, voltage protection, and cell health monitoring of such a huge number of cells. Glycol-based cooling technology is used in a Tesla battery pack. The BMS adjusts the glycol flow rate to maintain the optimum battery temperature. Voltage protection is another crucial job of the BMS. For example, in these three cells, during charging, the higher capacity cell will be charged more than the rest. To solve this problem, the BMS uses something called cell balancing. In cell balancing, all the cells are allowed to charge and discharge equally, thus protecting them from over and under voltage. This is where Tesla scores over Nissan battery technology. The Nissan LEAF has a huge battery cooling issue due to the big size of its cells and the absence of an active cooling method. The small multiple cell design has one more advantage. During high power demand situations, the discharge strain will be divided equally among each of the cells. Instead of many small cells, if we had used a single giant cell, it would have been put under a lot of strain, and eventually it would suffer a premature death. By using many small cylindrical cells, the manufacturing technology of which is already well established, Tesla clearly made a winning decision. There is a magical phenomenon which happens within lithium ion cells during their very first charge that saves the lithium ion cells from sudden death. Let's see what it is. The electrons in the graphite layer are a major problem. The electrolyte will be degraded if the electrons come into contact with it. However, the electrons never come into contact with the electrolyte due to an accidental discovery, the solid electrolyte interface. When you charge the cell for the first time, as explained above, the lithium ions move through the electrolyte. Here, in this journey, solvent molecules in the electrolyte cover the lithium ions. 
When they reach the graphite, the lithium ions, along with the solvent molecules, react with the graphite and form a layer there called the SEI layer. The formation of this SEI layer is a blessing in disguise. It prevents any direct contact between the electrons and the electrolyte, thus saving the electrolyte from degradation. In this overall process of the formation of the SEI layer, it will consume 5% of the lithium. The remaining 95% of the lithium contributes to the main working of the battery. Even though the SEI layer was an accidental discovery, with over two decades of research and development, scientists have optimized the thickness and chemistry of the SEI layer for maximum cell performance. It is amazing to find out that those electronic gadgets we used around two decades back did not use lithium ion batteries. With its amazing speed of growth, the lithium ion battery market is expected to become a $90 billion annual industry within a few years. The currently achieved number of charge discharge cycles of a lithium ion battery is around 3,000. Great minds across the globe are putting their best efforts into increasing this to 10,000 cycles. That means you would not have to worry about replacing the battery in your car for 25 years. Millions of dollars have already been invested in research into replacing the storage medium graphite with silicon. If this is successful, the energy density of the lithium ion cell will increase by more than five times. We hope this video provided you with a clear conceptual understanding about lithium. So I hope like uh, you people understand the basic how a lithium ion battery works. So here, basically, uh, what uh, I don't know, like how uh, when uh, how I used to start and uh, how I I can take away uh, all the things because that's why I just played because uh, this video and it clearly mentioned how a lithium ion battery works and from the application to the cell level. So here I I will tell you what are the potential area where we can work as a physicist. So here you see the in the video they talk about uh, the battery pack, right? See, this is uh, what I'm showing with the arrow. This is the battery pack, okay? So here in this battery pack, this battery pack is made of so many like this called battery modules. So here you can see uh, different cells are put, uh, means cells are put it in the series and the parallel. So here is suppose in, in the application point of view, when I talk about in that manner, so some uh, customer will come and ask you, I want to, for this particular device, I want a battery pack that should deliver uh, this much capacity, this much voltage, and uh, this uh, battery pack should stay like some 10 years. And now they mentioned like it's an ambitious for 25 years. So sometimes ESS application for storage applications, they will talk about like, yeah, I want a battery pack that should stay for some 10 years. And so, but I'm expecting this much voltage and this much capacity. Then as a physicist, you should know like if you design a battery pack, how, how many cells you need to put it there. So you have to know about what is the cell voltage and how the cells can be arranged. Uh, so to in order to meet the customer's criteria, you have to see like what are the series and parallel combination you have to bring it here. And uh, one, one thing is that one. And also like it is not like we are putting in a series or parallel combination make it. They will be having some constraint about the space. Then you have to think very carefully how the series and parallel combination you can bring it with the uh, customized space. So that kind of uh, thinking, so that will help like if you go with uh, some softwares and that uh, these softwares, BDS, uh, some uh, battery related softwares are there. So these softwares are basically all softwares, whatever we are using in battery, uh, all are based on the physics. So BDS softwares are there for the battery uh, design and the thermal management design softwares are there. These old softwares are working based on the physics. They, they While operating itself, we can see like this is based on the physics uh, theory and the principles. So things. So if you have a better idea, 
in thermodynamics and if you have a better idea about in electronics you can so uh, suppose some people who handle the software when we speak when we have a meeting with these people we'll be able to give more info to them so they will also appreciate because they will say like because of your understanding the field you you'll be able to give more information to us that will help us to even uh, modify the software modify some equations but here what we want what you should know is whatever the things you know in physics you should always whenever you learn some principles whenever you learn from even if you are learning electronics if you are learning solid state physics and if you are learning uh, some thermodynamics you have to see the applications because when we are learning these things in physics when we bring into the application where where it is not matching i will tell you because when we we use this equation as such in the software but once we go to the application some boundary conditions will change so when if you have a good idea about the practical and the theory then math elemental results well then that can reduce the error percentage so that kind of things uh, whenever you learn something if you learn about xrd xrd you are learning uh, during your course so you are learning about a diamond ram and spectroscopy but more than that you have to see like in uh, in the experimental how they are using the ram and spectroscopy and what are the things people are doing with the ram and spectroscopy and what are the people are doing is available and you can even search and you can make a better understanding and teachers are there if you have some doubts like you can discuss with them and utilize the opportunity now from uh, from the college days so that is one thing i i would like to convey to you and other thing is like next to 5 to 10 years i won't say next to 5 to 10 years even uh, after maybe 2030 uh, so we will see a, a drastic change in all over the world because the world is moving very fast in the energy technology so even if they are replacing all the uh diesel uh, diesel and uh, the petrol engines with this batteries so then we need a battery management system so there the people who are who are having a very good interest in the electronics i would suggest you people should take that field in the future also and even when you go for the phd or the postdoc or to know more about it you can select battery management system that will be give a very good opportunity because here the people who can handle the bms is very limited people and also to develop an efficient battery management system that needs so much effort also so the people who are interested in electronics you people can look into that aspect and when you go for some research or do some internship you can choose if this field is there means you can go for the internship or you can go for the research field also in your i can guarantee like uh, you don't you will get good opportunity in future if you do the, in this field i would say and uh, other thing other thing what is a battery when in the application point of view so when we are bringing in the application in the video you have seen like uh, they are using them some, some uh, cooling system here we will say this is um, thermal management so when the battery operates you have seen like uh, some lithium ions are moving from cathode to the anode during charging and then uh, during discharging the vice versa so there is a chemical reaction is happening Uh, means uh, some chemical changes are happening in the electrodes there will be some heat generation so the thing is like and also that this heat generation not in the uniform fashion and so you have to and uh, but once you allow this uh, without uh, any dissipate dissipating system once you put your batteries in some application uh, it will blast because it will go to the high temperature and uh, electrolyte can dry and uh, shorting can happen so we need very efficient thermal management system here i will tell you whoever is having some interest in the thermodynamics 
you can focus on this and in the application you can see even if you go for the phd or all the things you go something related to the application point of view who do the application of also and uh, i would say not go for only for uh, some cooling system uh, people are doing some research uh, like um, uh, nano fluids there you will get some idea but i would say you can choose in a in such a way that who do the experiment and the theory so then you will get a better idea because it is very crucial you have to make a good cooling system also here they just put it in this line but actually this is not like this in the video you might have seen there are some gaps because for the heat dissipation you need a maximum exposed area and also whatever the water you are whatever the liquid you are circulating here they are using the glycol as a coolant and some people use the nano fluids that mix with the glycol with some carbon and some other materials and uh, some people will use some epoxy composites so different kind of uh, cooling system we can make it so these all the things we should know so in if you go with the thermodynamics uh, when you find some material you have to see what the percolation is happening when uh, when you mix uh, epoxy with some carbon materials it will give some uh, thermal conductivity and electrical conductivity also so uh, but in the application point of view you have to see what material you have to fix it if you want to, if if you using an epoxy composite epoxy is a material okay you might have seen uh, like uh, some uh, how can i say like in home and all there some some places we use it's kind of uh, some kind of fluid kind of semi fluid kind of material so uh, it's like a gum like that kind of so uh, these people will use this material as uh, uh, for thermal uh, thermal uh, means heat dissipation so there also we have to see like where the percolation where the, uh, thermal and electrical behavior is where the maximum it is coming and all these things if you want to know you have to know so you have to know the electrical activity what is its thermal conductivity once it comes into a composite how it's physical mixing or anything we have to see so many properties so there when i talk about uh, the resistance and all these things there is other field like impedance so uh, when we may then you have impedance of the system also so th so these all impedance impedance also for uh, some softwares are there that also based on physics you whatever you are using equations you put some rcr circuit or instead of uh, c we will use some constant phase element these kind of things whatever we are having we have the knowledge accordingly you can modify even for the equation also to make a better fit for the physical system like this every application is related here i would say whoever is interested in thermodynamics you learn whatever uh, the thermal materials people are using for heat dissipation and you connect you may know like for the heat dissipation what equation you want to use then it, it may be in the equation it may mention the area it may mention the velocity and all these things then in the practical case how can be connected where people are using then uh, then also like that you have to correlate in thinking also in the application and then according if you are interested in the thermodynamics and all these things you have to approach uh, you have to go in that field i would say like uh, there are people who are doing in thermodynamics also some simulated theoretical work people are doing and some people are doing the experimental work also but i would suggest if you are going for a phd or in that way you have to see the people, people who do both or otherwise you have to find some opportunity in that way you have to find some project or but everything you have to do some hard work and to understand how it works and all these things yeah that is one thing that also like bms this also will be very important because if you want to replace all the things with the um, battery system without thermal management without a uh, battery management si system it is not possible to implement in the practical case 
and even for uh, even uh, all the companies also like uh, who are is doing in the software development you can see and also you try to learn these things maybe so many videos now uh, like uh, and thermal management system and battery management system and all these things you can see and you can learn also yeah and the thing and other field uh, here what i want to say is i suppose this is uh, when we come to the cell level this is cell this all the thermal management system and battery management system i talk about um, when in come into play as as a battery pack and uh, for the implementation the practical case so first for implementing the battery pack or to make a battery module we need the uh, cells so this is a typical uh, lithium ion battery we'll call as a cell it's some uh, people will call one as a cell and it more than one is battery that is different but i uh, here we can call it that so this battery inside is like this inside is like this in the sense you have seen in the video right so the basic principle is like you will be having one cathode one anode and one separator so here i would say like there are some research it's happening on the cathode material there are some research happening on the anode material and there are some research happening on the electrolyte and the separator okay so how you can play a role is the cathode material usually in the physics uh, department also usually people do intense research on these materials uh, like they they are making some novel materials as by solid state method or combustion method or whatever method they use and what they do is they will go for the ritual analysis and they will uh, see uh, like a, these kind of um, characterization they will do and uh, they will see other properties the crystallite size and the what kind of crystal and all these kind of properties but here i would suggest in the cathode sub, uh, if you want to do a, a, that kind of experimental work you can choose some some material which is relevant to the energy field then uh, there are opportunity if you develop a novel material suppose here uh, in cathode material people are using lfp lithium iron phosphate nmc nca and some lithium cobalt oxide this these are the prominent material people are using and mostly most of the materials are explored before coming to the battery they are explored in the magnetic properties later only it came to Uh, the energy field so what you can do is suppose if you are interested to uh, do some more uh, into the xrd uh, because some people are doing intense research for xrd they will make the material they will go for the uh, full proof uh, anal- means ritual analysis and so on so things so if you are interested in that kind of experimental and theory what and what you what you can do is you can choose some material relevant to this field because there also i have seen some now who are working in this field they are also now trying to make material relevant to the energy field so early we also had uh, some discussion with some process so they are also seeing the potential now and they are also shifting their research in this field now so in that way that kind of approach these are what happen once you go for the phd or uh, later okay so that kind of materials when you do you can search, you can do that kind of you can make that kind of material and also here i would suggest one more thing you are studying the solid state physics but i would suggest uh, yes whatever you are studying it's fine but along with this solid state physics you learn about the material synthesis also so you have to learn a bit about the chemistry also and then that will re- if you are working in the material science aspect Uh, wherever like when material science if you go you have more opportunity not only the energy technology you have more opportunities in other fields also but if you do something like that you you should have very strong solid state physics and you have a very good strong, uh, very strong uh, thing in means how the material can form what are the materials can how why it can't form and all these things in the uh, even synthesis and all this sophisticated things also so if you have some just in this material science aspect you try to learn both the uh, physics and the chemistry both
and here in the graphite anode and other thing is like now you won't know like people are calling graphene as a wandering material it's a wonder it makes wonder that is true and we can uh, make graphite for making graphite um, sorry graphene for making graphene in bulk also now it is not a big thing we can do it and uh, people are doing the modification of uh, graphene also and i'm using for different application also so here uh, i would say like um, in carbon related thing if you would like to work you it now the trend is like um, people are working very intensively to understand the other properties suppose uh, some people are doing the strain analysis uh, so with the help of spectroscopy or raman mapping so these things so once some material is inserted or if you apply some force a mechanical force how the um, um how the strain is evolving and all these things people are doing even for in in the battery also people are using for uh, some strain analysis uh, with fbg sensor uh fiber crack grating sensor they are using they are inserting the sensor and they are uh, understanding the strain what means during the reaction happens in the battery how the strain is evolving in the system this kind of research people are doing so make once you come to the material that is more into the fundamental research then the application but if you go if you want a little more then you can go to the material science there you can use or you learn both but i i would say like you you should have a clear idea about solid state physics and also a clear about idea about the chemistry or how the material forms and all these things that also uh, will give a good opportunity in the material science and this one uh, because um, now uh, even the people are preparing novel novel material and filing patents and we are seeing the application point of view how it works and all these things and that is one thing then this is us. i just put it here like lfp this uh, xrd so usually like uh, we are we are learning you all have learned about xrd how the xrd works and all these things but it it is good to know even if it is now uh, it maybe it's not available the xrd machine is not available but you can always um uh, type in google how the xrd machine works and how the graph are generating then you think about what you learned and like that in the application and the theory you try to correlate all the things and then more into like practically while implementing what are the things what are the hurdles and what are the new things we can learn that will that will ha- that will really help you i think to make uh, to make you understand the theory yeah better way yeah and other thing i just put for the raman ship also here uh, you can see these are the things you can see 1.2 volt 1.1 volt 1 volt these are the thing is like the based on um, lithium insertion and exertion like in in the batches based on that how the raman ship is happening so this kind of research people are doing it so only the thing is like this is very vast area actually this uh, energy technology field i just give a uh, surface knowledge now because i'm not sure like which area i have to take and i have to tell in deep because if i choose some area and if that is not interesting for you it may be quite boring now also maybe i'm not very sure about it but so uh, what i thought is like i will just give all the uh, relevant fields where are the opportunities are there and where are the fields you have to make it strong Uh, to find some opportunity in energy technology field one is the solid state physics one is the electronics and uh, other one is like battery ma- yeah battery ma- and thermodynamics and then the knowledge in the chemistry also so that will uh, help you even to make a good future in energy technology field and in the material science field also yeah yeah that's all about my presentation i don't know like whether you appreciate it whether it's fine or not okay yeah thank you for your time uh thank you ananya
ഇനി സ്റ്റുഡൻസിന് സ്റ്റുഡൻസിന് ഇന്ററാക്ട് ചെയ്യാനുള്ള ഒരു സമയമാണ് നിങ്ങൾക്ക് ചാറ്റ് ബോക്സിൽ ടൈപ്പ് ചെയ്യാം അല്ലെങ്കിൽ നേരിട്ട് ചോദിക്കുകയും ചെയ്യാം അല്ലെങ്കിൽ ഇംഗ്ലീഷിൽ സംസാരിച്ചു എന്ന് നിങ്ങൾ ഇംഗ്ലീഷ് തന്നെ അഞ്ചു വർഷം പി എച്ച് ഡി രണ്ട് പോസ്റ്റ് ഡോക്ക് എട്ട് വർഷമായിട്ട് വർക്ക് ചെയ്യുന്ന എൻവയോൺമെന്റും ഡിഫറെന്റ് ആണല്ലോ കേരളത്തിന് പുറത്താണല്ലോ ഞാൻ കുട്ടികളോട് പറഞ്ഞാണ് അവരിപ്പോ ഇനി ഇംഗ്ലീഷ് ചോദിക്കണമെന്ന് പേടിച്ചിട്ട് ഡോക്ടർ ഒന്നും ചോദിക്കാതിരിക്കണ്ട അനന്യ സംസാരിച്ച വിഷയത്തെ കുറിച്ചാവാം ജനറലായിട്ട് ഞാൻ പറഞ്ഞത് മനസ്സിലായിട്ടുണ്ടോ ഹലോ നിങ്ങളോട് നിങ്ങക്ക് മനസ്സിലായില്ല മനസ്സിലായില്ല എന്ന് തന്നെ പറഞ്ഞു കേട്ടോ ഒരു കുഴപ്പമില്ല ആരും പറയുന്നില്ലല്ലോ നിങ്ങക്ക് എന്താ മടിയെന്താ ചോദ്യങ്ങളൊന്നും വരുന്നില്ല സാർ ഇങ്ങനെ നമുക്ക് പേജല്ലേ സംസാരിക്കുന്നത് ഇങ്ങനെ പല ടൈപ്പ് ഉണ്ട് അപ്പൊ നമുക്ക് അതിപ്പം എത്രത്തോളം നമ്മൾക്ക് ആ ഏരിയ അതിൽ മാറ്റേഴ്സ് ആണ് നമ്മൾ എത്രത്തോളം മെറ്റീരിയൽ അത് ലോഡ് ചെയ്യുന്ന എന്നുള്ളത് മാറ്റേഴ്സ് ആണ് അപ്പൊ അതിനനുസരിച്ച് നമുക്ക് എഫിഷ്യ നമുക്ക് എഫിഷ്യൻസ് എഫിഷ്യൻസി ഇൻ ദ സെൻസ് എനർജി ഡെൻസിറ്റി വേണം എനർജി ഡെൻസിറ്റി പവർ ഡെൻസിറ്റി വേണം പവർ ഡെൻസിറ്റി ചെറിയ ബാറ്ററികൾ ഇങ്ങനെ അടിക്കി പിടിക്കുന്ന ഇതുപോലെയല്ലേ ഞാൻ ഉദ്ദേശിച്ചത് ഒരു സിംഗിൾ ബാറ്ററി ആയിട്ട് അതുപോലെ തന്നെ വേറെ വേണമെങ്കിൽ ഇപ്പൊ പ്രിസ്മാറ്റിക് എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞിട്ടുണ്ട് നമ്മൾ ഈ ചെറിയ സെല്ല് ചെയ്തതിന് പകരം ഈ സ്ക്വയർ ആയിട്ട് നമുക്ക് പല ഡയമെൻഷൻസ് ചെയ്യാം നമ്മൾ ഒരു പ്രിസ്മാറ്റിക് സെല്ല് എന്ന് പറയും ഇപ്പം പ്രിസ്മാറ്റിക് സെൽസ് ചെയ്യാം അതുപോലെ തന്നെ പൗട്ട് സെൽസ് ചെയ്യാം പക്ഷെ ഇവിടെയൊക്കെ എന്താ പ്രശ്നം എന്ന് വെച്ച് കഴിഞ്ഞാല് നമ്മൾ ഒരു പരിധി വിട്ട് നമ്മൾ അതിന്റെ ഡയമെൻഷൻ ഇൻക്രീസ് ചെയ്യുമ്പോൾ ഇതിന്റെ ഇത് ഈ സിസ്റ്റം കൂളിങ് ചെയ്യാൻ ടെസ്റ്റ് കമ്പയർ ചെയ്തപ്പോ തന്നെ അവർക്ക് അറിയില്ല ഈ സൈസ് വേരി ചെയ്യുമ്പോൾ ഉള്ള ഒരു പ്രശ്നം എന്ന് പറയാം നമുക്ക് അതിനുള്ള എഫിഷ്യൻ കൂളിംഗ് സിസ്റ്റം വേണം അപ്പൊ എഫിഷ്യൻ ബാറ്ററി മാനേജ്മെന്റ് സിസ്റ്റം വേണം നമുക്ക് അതില്ലെങ്കിൽ അത് ഇങ്ങനെ ഇംപ്ലിമെന്റ് ചെയ്യാൻ ബുദ്ധിമുട്ടാണ് അതുകൊണ്ടാണ് ഈ റാൻഡം ഫാഷനിൽ നമ്മള് ഡയമെൻഷൻസ് കൊണ്ടുപോകാത്തത് ഓക്കെ 
ഓക്കെ പിന്നെ ഉള്ള ഒരു ചോദ്യം ഇത് ഇതുമായിട്ട് ബന്ധപ്പെട്ടില്ല മാർക്കറ്റുമായിട്ട് ബന്ധപ്പെട്ടില്ല നമുക്കിപ്പോ ഓൾറെഡി ഗ്ലോബൽ മാർക്കറ്റ് ഉണ്ടല്ലോ നമുക്ക് ഇന്ത്യൻ ലോക്കൽ മാർക്കറ്റുകൾ എത്രത്തോളം പിന്നെ ഉണ്ടായി വരുന്നുണ്ട് ഇതിന് അതായത് ഒരു ഇൻഡിപെൻഡൻ കമ്പനി ഇന്ത്യയിൽ ഇതുപോലത്തെ ഇതുപോലത്തെ ന്യൂ ടെക്നോളജിയിൽ ഇൻവെസ്റ്റ് ചെയ്യുന്നത് എത്രത്തോളം എത്രത്തോളം പോസിബിൾ ആയിരിക്കും ആ ആക്ച്വലി നമുക്ക് ആക്ച്വലി നമുക്ക് അങ്ങനെ ഒരു മാർക്കറ്റ് ഇവിടെ ഇല്ല മാർക്കറ്റ് ഇല്ല എന്നല്ല നമുക്ക് അങ്ങനെയുള്ള ഒരു സെൽഫ് പ്രൊഡക്ഷൻ ലെവലിൽ ഒരു മാനുഫാക്ചറിങ് ഇല്ല ഇന്ത്യയിൽ അതാണ് നമ്മുടെ നമ്മളിപ്പോ നമ്മളിപ്പോ സെൽസ് ഇപ്പൊ ചൈനയോ അല്ലെങ്കിൽ വേറൊരു കൺട്രിയോ നമ്മൾ ഇവിടത്തേക്ക് കൊണ്ടുവരുമ്പോ അപ്പൊ അവര് അവിടെ ടെസ്റ്റ് ചെയ്യുന്ന ഒരു ക്ലൈമറ്റിക് കണ്ടീഷൻ ഇവിടെ വരുമ്പോൾ ഉള്ള വ്യത്യാസം അപ്പൊ നമ്മൾക്ക് എല്ലാ സെല്ലും അങ്ങനെ നമ്മളൊരു ട്രാഫിക്കൽ കണ്ടീഷൻസിന് അത് സക്സസ് ആയിരിക്കില്ല അപ്പൊ അത് ഫെയിലിയർ ആവും അതുകൊണ്ടാണ് നമ്മൾ പറയുന്നത് ഇപ്പൊ ഇവിടെ തന്നെ മാറ്റി ഉണ്ടാക്കേണ്ട ഒരു ആവശ്യകത അതുകൊണ്ടാണ് അപ്പം വൺസ് അത് സക്സസ്ഫുൾ ആണെങ്കിൽ ഇന്ത്യയിൽ നല്ലൊരു മാർക്കറ്റ് ഉണ്ട് ഇപ്പം ഈവൻ ടെക്സ്റ്റ എക്സ്ട്രസ്ല ഇന്ത്യയിൽ ഇന്ത്യയിൽ ഇതുണ്ട് പിന്നെ ഫാരഡോൺ സോഡിയം ആൻഡ് ബാറ്ററിന്റെ പിന്നെ ഉണ്ടായിരുന്നൊരു ചെറിയൊരു ഡൗട്ട് മറന്നുപോയല്ലോ എന്തോ ചോദിക്കാൻ ആ അത് നമ്മളെ പോളിസീസിനെ പറ്റിയാണ് എങ്ങനെയാണ് പബ്ലിക് ആൻഡ് പ്രൈവറ്റ് പോളിസീസ് ഇത്തരത്തിലുള്ള ലോങ് ടേം ലൈക്ക് എന്താ പറയാ സസ്റ്റൈനബിൾ എനർജി ടെക്നോളജിയിലുള്ള നിലവിലുള്ള കറന്റ് സ്റ്റാറ്റസ് ഒരു ഇത് പൊതുവെ നമ്മൾ പറഞ്ഞു കേൾക്കുന്നത് ഭയങ്കര ഐഡിയൽ ആയിട്ട് സസ്റ്റൈനബിൾ ടെക്നോളജിക്ക് പബ്ലിക് സെക്ടറിലും പ്രൈവറ്റ് സെക്ടറിലും ഭയങ്കര ഇമ്പോർട്ടൻസ് ഉണ്ട് എന്നൊക്കെയാണ് പക്ഷെ എത്രത്തോളം നമ്മൾ ലോങ് ടേമിൽ ഈ പോളിസീസിൽ നീതി വളർത്തുന്നുണ്ട് എങ്ങനെയാണ് ഒരു കറന്റ് സ്റ്റാറ്റസ് നിങ്ങൾ ഒരു റിവ്യൂ എന്തായാലും ആക്ച്വലി നമുക്കിപ്പോ ഇപ്പൊ ഇന്ത്യയില് ഒരു ബാറ്ററി ടെക്നോളജി ബാറ്ററി ടെക്നോളജി നമ്മൾ രണ്ടായിരത്തി പത്ത് ആ ഒരു നിലവിലാണ് ഇപ്പൊ നമുക്ക് അറിയാം എല്ലാം നോക്കി കഴിഞ്ഞാലും ഈ ബാറ്ററി റിസേർച്ചില് ഒരു പ്രോമിനൻസ് വന്നത് ഏകദേശം ഈ ഈ സമയത്താണ് ഇപ്പൊ ഇന്ത്യയിൽ ഇപ്പൊ ഇവിടെ നോക്കുന്നത് നമ്മൾ ഡി ആർ ഡി ഒ നോക്കുകയാണെങ്കിൽ ഡിഫൻസ് സെക്ടർ ഇപ്പൊ എല്ലാവരും ആ പ്രൈമറി ബാറ്ററിയിൽ നിന്നാണ് സെക്കൻഡറി ബാറ്ററിയിലേക്ക് പോകുന്നത് ഇപ്പൊ ഇവിടെ ഇതൊക്കെ ഐഡിയലായിട്ട് പറയുന്നതല്ല കാരണം എന്താ വെച്ചാൽ ഇപ്പൊ നമുക്ക് അത് പ്രാക്ടിക്കലി ഇംപ്ലിമെന്റ് ചെയ്യേണ്ട ഒരു ആവശ്യകത വന്നിരിക്കും അപ്പം ഇപ്പൊ ഗവൺമെന്റ് സെക്ടറാണെങ്കിൽ ഒരുപാട് പോളിസ്റ്റ് ചേഞ്ച് ചെയ്യും ഈ എനർജി സെക്ടറിൽ ഇപ്പൊ പ്രോജക്ട് ചെയ്യുകയാണെങ്കിൽ ഇപ്പം നല്ല പ്രോജക്ട് ആ രീതിയിൽ ഇവൻ സ്റ്റാർട്ടപ്പിനെ കൂടെ ഇൻക്ലൂഡ് ചെയ്യുന്ന രീതിയിൽ കുറെ പ്രോജക്റ്റ് വന്നിട്ടുണ്ട് ബാറ്ററി ടെക്നോളജിനെ പ്രൊമോട്ട് ചെയ്യുന്നത് പോളിസിയിൽ ചേഞ്ച് വന്നിട്ടുണ്ട് ഇപ്പൊ ബ്രിമിയാനുള്ള ഐഡിയൽ ആയിട്ടുണ്ടാകും ഇപ്പൊ ഗവൺമെന്റ് സൈഡിൽ നിന്ന് സൈഡിൽ നിന്നാണെങ്കിലും ഭയങ്കര രീതിയിൽ പ്രൊമോട്ട് ചെയ്യുന്നുണ്ട് എനർജി ടെക്നോളജി അതൊരു ഫാക്ടാണ് പ്രൈവറ്റിന്റെ ഭാഗത്തോ എങ്ങനെയാണ് പ്രൈവറ്റുകാർ ഈ സയൻസുകളിൽ ഇൻവെസ്റ്റ് ചെയ്യുന്നത് എങ്ങനെയാണ് ആവശ്യമാണ് <laughs> 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 ഇതിപ്പോ നമുക്ക് ഒരു എന്താ പറയാ എല്ലാം ഗവൺമെന്റ് സെക്ടറിൽ നിന്ന് ചെയ്യാൻ പറ്റില്ല എല്ലാം പ്രൈവറ്റ് സെക്ടറിൽ നിന്ന് ചെയ്യാൻ പറ്റും ഇതൊക്കെ ഒരു ജോയിൻ ജോയിൻ വേണി പോകുന്നു ഇപ്പൊ ഡി ആർ ഡി ആണെങ്കിൽ അവര് പറയുന്നത് എന്താന്ന് വെച്ച് കഴിഞ്ഞാൽ ഇഫ് യു ആർ റെഡി ടു ബിനീറ്റ് ആൻഡ് മേക്ക് ഇറ്റ് ആൻഡ് ഷോ ഇറ്റ് ദേ വിൽ പ്രൊമോട്ട് ഒക്കെയാണോ എന്നാണ് ഒരു പെട്ടെന്ന് പറയാൻ പറ്റില്ലല്ലോ റിസർച്ച് ആണല്ലോ 
സോ അപ്പൊ അവരുടെ പോളിസിയുടെ ഡ്യൂറേഷൻസ് ഒക്കെ എത്രത്തോളം അതാണ് എന്റെ ചോദ്യം ഉണ്ടായിരുന്നത് ഒരു ലോങ് ടേം ഇൻവെസ്റ്റ്മെന്റിനൊക്കെ ഇവര് രണ്ട് സൈഡിൽ നിന്നും എങ്ങനെയാണ് പൊതുവേ Okay. In our 5 years, they are ready to invest in anything, any of the problems which they see the potential. One project is that there is a potential in the world. If we invest in so much money, there are different criteria. We have to go uh, uh, in the field trials. In uh, other countries, we have to sacrifice the money. മറ്റേ ഏതെങ്കിലും സ്റ്റുഡൻസ് ആർക്കെങ്കിലും എന്തെങ്കിലും ഇന്ററാക്ഷൻ ഇല്ലെങ്കിൽ നമുക്ക് ഇന്നത്തെ പ്രോഗ്രാമിന് വോട്ട് ഓഫ് താങ്ക്സ് പറയാൻ വേണ്ടി ഞാൻ second year bsc physics la trajection hello good afternoon appo innate talk valare nalladayirunno karanam njangal na adhigam parijay illatha or area ayirunno appo endha ee automobiles la okku oru paadu changes varunnundi ipo lithium and battery ne kuriche cheechi class eduthappole manasilai oru paadu complex aayittulla karyangal adile varunnundi അപ്പോ ഇനിയുള്ള ഇയേഴ്സിൽ ഒരുപാട് റിസർച്ച് നടത്തിയിട്ട് വലിയ രീതിയിലുള്ള ഒരു ഇൻപുട്ട് നമുക്ക് അതിൽ നിന്ന് കിട്ടും എന്ന് തോന്നുന്നു അപ്പൊ ഇനിയുള്ള ഇയേഴ്സിൽ ഒരുപാട് സയൻസ് ഒരുപാട് മുന്നോട്ട് പോകുന്നുണ്ട് അപ്പോ അതുപോലെ ചേച്ചി എന്താ കോളേജിൽ ഉണ്ടായിരുന്ന കാര്യങ്ങളെ കുറിച്ച് പറഞ്ഞപ്പോൾ ഫാക്കൾട്ടി നമ്മളെ സഹായിച്ചതിനെ പറ്റി പറഞ്ഞതും അതുപോലെ ഏച്ചി പറഞ്ഞിട്ടുണ്ടായിരുന്നു ഇൻഡിവിജ്വലിനേക്കാളും ഗ്രൂപ്പ് ആയിട്ടുള്ള ഒരു ചില ഡിസ്കഷൻസ് ആയിരുന്നു നല്ലതെന്നൊക്കെ അപ്പൊ അതൊക്കെ അതിൽ നിന്നെല്ലാം ഞങ്ങൾക്ക് ഒരുപാട് എന്താണ് കിട്ടിയിട്ടുണ്ട് ഇന്ന് ടോക്കിൽ നിന്ന് ഒരുപാട് ഞങ്ങൾ ഇൻസ്പയർഡ് ആയിട്ടുണ്ട് പിന്നെ ഇത് ഏകദേശം ഞങ്ങൾ അത്ര പരിചയമില്ലാത്തത് കൊണ്ട് കുറച്ചാണ് ഇതൊക്കെ അങ്ങ് മനസ്സിലായിട്ടുള്ളത് ഐ മീൻ ആ ലിത്തിയം അയോൺ ബാറ്ററി ഒക്കെ കുറച്ച് എന്താ ചേച്ചിയുടെ റിസർച്ച് ഫീൽഡ് അല്ലേ അതുകൊണ്ട് അങ്ങനെ അപ്പൊ ഇന്ന് ചേച്ചി ഞങ്ങൾക്ക് ക്ലാസ് എടുത്തു തന്നതിന് എന്റെ പേരിലും ഡിപ്പാർട്ട്മെന്റിന്റെ പേരിലും താങ്ക്സ് പറയുന്നു താങ്ക് യു